Yeah, we literally did do a whole seven track album in eight days. Yeah, I'll never forget. There was one day where we did two. Oh, right, right, and right. And I remember it was probably like three in the morning where like... Guy, we, we had the broomstick on the <laughs> thing. I had a guy lived above me. It, like the, the basement apartment I lived in was slow. You couldn't, even, you couldn't stand up. No. Like fully. You, you had to, to like, duck, your, duck head your head to get in. And it smelled uh, because the guy's toilet broke one time. <laughs> Uh, that's that's where uh, yep, and then we we lit a firework on his door, ran away like a bunch of little losers. We were like <laughs> fully grown adults. <laughs> but I remember we yeah we did two tracks and one and I, one of them I think we finished a track around two three in the morning, and then and then you then you started another one. I was yeah. like, what the hell are you doing? But there's something of, I don't know. There's something about the delirium of of sleep deprivation too that can lead to some interesting stuff because then the next day it was like there's this second track that like if I was just alone I would have never made a track start to finish and then started right. another but we had limited time together since i was flying up there and everything that we i think that has a lot to do with it too i think a lot of my great well great or some of what i feel is like my better work is done and this is actually a really good tip it's actually really done at you know six to seven in the morning having been up all night scratching my head on stuff because i think your brain there's some real science to that. Uh, you know, you you get into that delirium mode where you get a little more euphoric, you know, naturally, you know, just from being tired and stuff like that. And, and I think that can be noted on any given one of my full 12 hour long streams where I've made tracks like this one. Uh, if you go and find it on Twitch, I'm sure it's there. There's a 10 hour long stream and the, the track really doesn't start to take shape until like, you know, four or five in the morning and then and then from five to ten a.m. it's it's more polishing but the ideas really do happen at the witching hour so maybe for me maybe it's partly like parts of your brain are shutting off so you, you stop analyzing or maybe something like that or? all right and then you don't have the frustrations of daytime phone calls stuff and you know normal things and cats and girlfriends and yeah you can get tunnel vision and you just like yeah, in the get, zone mm-hmm and, and, and your phone doesn't ring, so yeah, that's that's interesting. Not, actually, now that I'm actually thinking, I've never really figured that out. But yeah, all my all my stuff has really peaked at f four, three to three to six a.m. What do you think about like deadlines and pressure? Do you think you make tracks better? Because um, like, you've, you've done remixes, I know, in the past and stuff. Where it's you like, know what? Yeah, yeah, I've done things. I, I used to do remixes back in the day where you know, like it was like a job. You know, they say, hey, we need this, and we need this by, and more often than not, I, I, I say only, like, maybe about three out of ten ever made it past my own quality control, just because I, like, oh, God, this is terrible, just, I, I can't even, I can't even take money for this, it's bad, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm just pressured to do it, and I, I, I So can't. the deadlines aren't a good thing, you know? Not, not, not for, for me. You, not for you. A lot of dudes can do that, like, right. film composers and all that stuff, that's yeah. all they're about are the deadlines, and Hans yeah. Zimmer and his whole team, all about the deadline, and, and they need to meet them, it's not an optional thing, they don't do it on spec, you <laughs> right, know, right. so, so they really gotta really just know their stuff, and know the formulas involved, and routines it is to, to be, and inject their own bit of creativity into the, the project that, you know, they need to do, but it's all super stress environment where, you know, they get things done and everything's scheduled and organized. But I, I, I think that's a different type of uh, mentality altogether. That's just, you know, something you got to train yourself into, you know, even though, you know, we're kind of demoing a, a dance track here, an EDM track, if you will. Uh, I mean, a lot of this stuff still also applies to other types of music, like, you know, like dubstep and techno. You know, no, I mean, you know, like, it, you, be experiment, experiment too. That's another thing uh, Steve and I uh, used to do back in the day is uh, we, we kind of did the dance music thing as a, like, hey, let's just try this out. Another thing we used to do, you know, we did, we did some really crazy IDM type experimental stuff. We did a, we did a full on guitar, vocal track and piano, piano and, and yeah, like it, it's good to just kind of, you know, put, put EDM to the curb for like, you know, an hour a day if you can, you know, like it, under the, under the guise that no one's going to listen to it. You know, uh, I do that all the time. Sometimes, like, I, I'm also afraid to kind of do that while I'm streaming because I don't want people to tune in uh, because, you know, I have expectations. Of, you know, people have expectations of me, so they don't want to tune in and, and see me doing this weird noise and then them going, oh, where's the drop? Uh, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, it gets to me too. So I sometimes I just 
avoid doing that. But sometimes when the cameras are off and you know the cats are locked out and the girlfriend's out for dinner, I I come in here and I, I make all sorts of weird, you know, like and, and play with rhythms that don't make any sense. And sometimes they're not mastered well. Sometimes they're mastered really great, but they just sound like crazy acid circus clown music. But it, it's it's good to just get that out of your system. It's kind of like you know the the producer version of the Shake Your Sillies out is really great um, because you know you you learn new things. And then you and then when you're doing the things that you know you want to show off or you want to be you know part of your image, then you can take some little bit of that thing and say, oh, I'm gonna put this here, and everyone's gonna go, whoa, that's awesome, you know. And you're like, well, you know, I invented that and or you, whatever. And you've reworked entire tracks, right? Like I know that like um, Ghost and stuff was originally like sort of a breakbeat kind of track, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe if you're, in, if you're doing something that is out of the confines of whatever your comfort zone, you'll do, something, you'll do something that might interest you, and then thus maybe you can even apply that to this more mainstream yeah. musical mentality, and it's going to make, and the sum will be greater than the parts, potentially. Exactly, exactly. And then, and then as you're doing these experimentations, anything that catches your ear, anything that makes you, you know, kind of excited about what you're doing and, and the sounds that you're making, you know, you just save that clip and then just put it in your idea bin and hold it and then you'd be pleasantly surprised when you're working on a track and you can't think of an idea where you can't go into that bin and go, oh, then there's this and it works and then this works and then I can make this to go into that and then it's, yeah, Mr. Potato Head EDM. I'm, I'm like, I, the more I'm realizing how stupid dance music is, it just makes me more and more mad that I'm the poster child for this shit. I used to be all right. I used to be okay. Like, I used to be cool with it, and I used to be into this and that, but now it's just so much of it. It's like, it's literally turning me into a really, a bitter person, well, or, or just starting, but but not like kids, not like guys who are interested and genuinely want to try. I'll go and help those kids out. I mean, like, like, like Tygo and, and Martin Garrix that they, 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 they start get, shooting up. They get to that thing and then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, this is what I this is what I do. You know, it's like I'm done. Dude, you are I am done. Yeah, I can, yeah. I cannot. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you can't say that you weren't there to, you know what I mean? Because yes, I used a, some weird Fruity Loops with some stupid plugins and managed to make a top selling track out of it. But you know, I think the thing that did it for me was a lot of that, I don't know, maybe I'm just being an egotistic, but I think the thing that actually put me out on top of that was the melodies and the well, things that I was doing. Yes, it's different. different. Because it was technically no different than what everyone else was doing. It's actually inferior, you know what I mean? Right. And fidelically, way inferior because, well, well to some. It was, it was louder in ways, but maybe. But it wasn't anything like, whoa, the dynamic yeah. room. Whoa, yeah. the well, there was, I, I'm sure there was guys 10 years older than you that had been doing the thing, spinning vinyl, whatever, that saw you come up, especially given Mouse had and all 